Good evening, uh, Park Lawn family, Facebook family. God bless you. Welcome back to 6 p.m. prayer, uh, midweek, Wednesdays. Pastor Marcus Arrington here, and I'm so glad that we have another opportunity to go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. We're going to give a few more folks an opportunity to join us, and then we are going to dive in. Pray that your week is going well so far and that you are prospering. Uh, God desires that we prosper in all things, uh, that we prosper in health, in our bodies, even as our soul prospers. And so it is a blessing to be named amongst those who are redeemed. And uh, we are going to lift the Savior up this evening. So I hope you're ready. Have your Bible handy. Have your Bible handy. Uh, if you've been with us at any point during the last year, you know that uh, spontaneity is part of how I flow. I tap into what Holy Spirit is, is functioning or revealing at the time. And uh, this evening will be no different. Hallelujah. Wait about one more minute and then we'll begin to take off. Hallelujah. While you're waiting, again, get your Bible. Make sure it's handy. Make sure you have access to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Come on, you can already begin to stir yourselves up in the Holy Ghost. Use your prayer language. Begin to tell the Lord, thank you. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. You're wonderful, God. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to create an atmosphere right where you are. Come on, give him room this evening. Make a, make a space. Hallelujah. Prepare a sanctuary, even an altar where you are right, right now, right where you are. Father, we present ourselves as living sacrifices. Hallelujah. Yes, God, it's our desire to continually, Lord, lay down our lives, to continually give ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus provided the model. Jesus provided the example. Jesus showed us the way. Hallelujah. Jesus is our burnt offering. He voluntarily consecrated himself unto you. Jesus is the paragon of sacrifice. He is the leader, the front rank uh, the front rank example of what it means to give one's life wholly and completely to the plan and the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Jesus, we honor you this evening. Jesus, we glorify you this evening. Jesus, we magnify you. Hallelujah. There's none more deserving of praise. There's none more deserving of worship. There's none more deserving of, of being uh, followed and whose words should be adhered to. Jesus, hallelujah, you are God. The scripture says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. Jesus, you are the word of life. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. You have a name, yes, that's, that is written, uh, and your name is the word of God. You are the living word. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 114, Lord says, if the word became flesh, hallelujah, and dwelt among men, tabernacled among us, Lord, thank you. You showed us the way. Uh, you are the prototype for God in man. Hallelujah. You are Emmanuel. And we reverence you. We lift you up. Jesus, we bless you. Come on, help me lift him up this evening. Come on, help me acknowledge the Lord our Savior. We just celebrated and recognized Resurrection Sunday this past Sunday. Hallelujah. Uh, but just because that date has passed does not mean that we have to stop our honor. We have to stop our celebration. Uh, his resurrection is good to me every day. His resurrection is beautiful to me every day. Yes, because he lives, I live. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Come on, declare that out of your mouth. Jesus lives. He lives. 
He lives. Therefore, my faith is not in vain. He lives. Uh, he lives. Therefore, my sins are forgiven. Yes, he lives. Therefore, I do have a hope beyond the grave. Yes, he lives. He lives and he lives inside of me. Jesus, I thank you that you have even commissioned me to be your hands and feet extended uh, in the earth realm. Jesus, I thank you that you've given me voice and I can lift my voice. I can proclaim truth. I can proclaim the message of the kingdom. I can proclaim the gospel. Lord, I can tell the story uh, that is written in the text about you. Lord, I can begin to uh, uh, convey uh, the message of reconciliation to those who are without, those who are on the periphery, those who don't know you. I can begin to shout and proclaim, come back to God. Lord, I bless you because now we can all come to the throne of grace. We can all come to the Father by the Holy Spirit because of what you have done. This is Ephesians 2.18, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's because of what you have done. You have redeemed us. You have secured our freedom. Lord, you have granted and granted us access, yes, to the very presence of the Father, the throne of God. Yes, God, the throne, uh, the, the throne, the, the, the mercy seat, yes, has become a throne of grace rather than a throne of judgment because the blood of the Lamb was poured out. Thank you for the blood that you shed, Jesus. Thank you for the all atoning blood that, that was shed for us. Lord, we thank you that you have become our peace. You have championed and you have secured reconciliation for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are our Passover lamb. Thank you, Lord. Father said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. And we thank you if the blood has been sprinkled and applied to our lives. And therefore, the righteousness of God is imputed unto us because of you, Jesus. You are our righteousness. Hallelujah. Yes, you are. You are our righteousness, O oh God. You are our peace. You are our Sabbath day rest. You are, yes, the resurrection and the life. You are the way. You are the truth. Hallelujah. Lord, you are the door, the gate, if you will. Lord, you provide access and the way uh, to, to heaven and to relationship with Father. Jesus, you have provided for us a better covenant, a new covenant ratified by your blood. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your selflessness. Jesus, thank you for your vision. Thank you for calling men and women unto you. Thank you, Jesus, for seeing me, Lord. You see me like you saw Levi. Lord, you see me like you saw Nathaniel. Hallelujah. You see me like you saw uh, the fishermen. Lord, you see me, and I thank you that you also hear me, Lord. And not only do you see and do you hear, but Lord, you also respond to our needs. Father, we relish the truth of the word, which says that you are near to those who call upon you in truth. I'm so glad, God, that when I cry out to you, I have a savior who hears me. I'm so glad, God, that when I lift my voice, hallelujah, in earnest supplication and petition, you hear me. Yes, even as the psalmist says in Psalm 116, I love the Lord because he answered me. He heard me. Oh, God, even now you hear us when we acknowledge you in humility, when we come before your presence the right way with thanksgiving, with praise and acknowledgement, with repentant hearts. Lord, you hear us. God, we acknowledge where we've missed it on today. We acknowledge our faults, Father. We acknowledge that we've missed it in some shape, form or fashion. Lord, we ask you to wash and cleanse us of all iniquity, wash and cleanse us of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, that we may perfect holiness out of a reverence for you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for sins of omission and commission, O oh God, even as we release others, God. We release others who have mistreated us, perhaps. We release others who have done us wrong in some capacity. Jesus, you even said, bless those who persecute you. Bless those who despitefully use you. You gave us the command to love those who are our enemies, Lord. And so we release those who trespassed against us. We released them, hallelujah, recognizing that we have too been forgiven. And we thank you, Lord, that forgiveness is completely and entirely and always accessible to us because of what you've done, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. Thank you, Lord, for washing us. God, we give you our hearts. God, we give you our minds. God, we give you all of us, our strength and our soul. Lord, you can have my feelings. You can have my emotions. God, I yield and submit my intellect to you. God, I, I yield and submit my consciousness to you. Lord, I yield and I submit, hallelujah, my memories to you, oh God. You can have it all. Yes, you can redeem all of it, God. I'll not leave any part of me untouched by you. Come on here. How many of you know we need the grace of God to cover us entirely? Hallelujah. We need the grace of God for every aspect and feature of our lives. Come on, man of God. Come on, woman of God. Come on, Facebook family, friend. You may not even know the Lord as Savior right now, but listen, I want to help you to understand that Jesus loves you and his grace is sufficient. His grace will cover you. In fact, you are saved and can be saved by grace, not based upon things you have done, not based upon your own merit or what you can earn. No, uh, but the gift of God, which is salvation, which is his eternal life is only secured by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By grace, through faith, are you saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Confess and acknowledge that he is the savior of the entire world. Confess and acknowledge that he died to set you free from the penalty of sin and that God raised him again on the third day to justify you. In other words, to declare that you are righteous, to announce that though you are guilty, he considers you righteous because of what Jesus has done. In other words, the wrong that you did, God put it on Jesus. And the right that he did, God puts it on you because of what Jesus did. And if you receive that work that Jesus performed, if you receive it for yourself, the Bible says you are saved. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for those, God, who come to you. We thank you for those who will yield and submit their lives to you. Holy Spirit, begin to deal with hearts even as we pray. God, begin to begin to draw attention to your loving kindness. Begin to prick hearts. Hallelujah. We thank you for contrite hearts. God, we thank you for brokenness this evening, Lord. Yes, even as the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is celebrated and recognized, symbolizing the sinlessness of Christ, the humility of Christ. Lord, we come humbly this evening. Hallelujah. Yes, we proclaim the finished work of Jesus at the cross for ourselves. And therefore, our righteousness is certified, not because of us, but because of what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Come on. We need to celebrate Jesus. We need to honor Jesus. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise for Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Now that actually means that Jesus Christ is the blueprint. Begotten there means that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is the original. Come on here. That there's no other that uh, that more perfectly expresses or exemplifies the idea of God, the intention of God, God's dream for humanity. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father, hallelujah, and God gave him to us to be a propitiation, the mercy seat, hallelujah, that we would not be penalized for our transgressions and iniquity, our sin, but that we would be cleansed, forgiven, restored, made whole, even redeemed. Hallelujah. That means that I have a new nature now in Christ Jesus, the old man, the sinful man, the sinful nature that I inherited by way of my ancestor, Adam, no longer is mine, but I have been regenerated by the power of the Holy Ghost. And now I have the nature, hallelujah, of the second Adam. I have the nature of Christ, hallelujah, that which is one that is willing to be submitted to God, willing to be yielded to the Father. And we declare even Hebrews 10, 7, lo, we come in the volume of the book to do thy will, to do your will, O Jacob, to do your will, God. I come down, Lord. I submit myself. I humble myself, Lord. I make myself of no reputation and I do your will. Hallelujah. 
I do your will. Jesus said in the book of John, I believe it's chapter eight, he says, or six, one of the two, I have come down from heaven to do your will. Come on here. See, he left a place of comfort. He left a place of glory. He left what was privileged space, privileged status, privileged station to come and become poor that we might become rich. Glory to his name. I'm telling you, people of God, he deserves our praise. I'm telling you, he deserves our reverence this evening. And so we lift the Savior. Come on, I'm still in the realm of thanksgiving. I'm still in the realm of praise on this evening. Come on, we lift the Savior up. Hallelujah. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Bless your name, Jesus. We cry Hosanna. We cry hallelujah. Hail King. All oh, hail King Jesus. Hail to the King. You're worthy of our honor. You're worthy of majesty. Worthy of blessings, worthy of glory, worthy of dominion, worthy of wealth, worthy of God. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory belongs to our God and to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to begin to open your mouth the more and cry out. Hallelujah. Ah, sede mande cosa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your voice. Come on. I feel something right there. Hallelujah. Come on. It'll bless you if you praise him. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Oh, it's something that's liberating about praise. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be loose from complaining, that you will be loose, hallelujah, from speaking idle words, and that you will begin to have your tongue loosed to begin to praise God, that your tongue will be loose to begin to lift him up, that your tongue will be loose to begin to magnify him. Yeah, make him large this evening. Come on and brag on him. Come on and make your boast in the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. You are holy, oh God. You are righteous. You are just. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are magnificent. There is nobody like you. From eternity to eternity, you are God. We call you Messiah. We call you Adonai. We call you Savior. Yeah, we call you Redeemer. We call you Deliverer. Hallelujah. We call you our way out and our way through. Lord, you are our protector. God, you are our promise keeper. Hallelujah. You are the one who comforts us. Yeah, you are the one, Lord, who frees us. Yes, you are. You lift us up. You lift our heads. You lift us so that we're not bent beneath heavy loads. You are our provider. Yes, you are. You are even a man of war. We begin to acknowledge you, oh God, as Jehovah Gabor, a man of war. He who fights for us. He who defeats enemies on our behalf. God, you are merciful. You are compassionate, mighty king, lover of justice. Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to indulge me for a few moments while I brag on our our God, you are El Shaddai, God who is more than enough, the many-breasted one, uh, the one who nourishes. Uh, you are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. You are Jehovah Shalom, God, our peace. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. Hallelujah. Come on. Uh, if, the, if you have the Lord in your life, if you are a believer, then guess what? The Lord is with you. And if the Lord is with you, then you can proclaim that Jehovah Rapha is with me. Hallelujah. Come on. The spirit of God dwells in you. When you believe and when you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Many of us have the baptism. We've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and the spirit of God has in has filled us. We've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? Jehovah Rapha fills your being. Yes. And he releases healing power to you. May it permit, may it flow out of your spirit and may it permeate your body. May it flow out of your spirit and may it reach your mind. May it flow out of your spirit and may it reach your emotions. We decree and declare that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. No more distress. No more discomfort 
consolation. No more dis-ease in the name of Jesus. No more rulership of anxiety. No more rulership of panic. No more rulership of heaviness in the name of Jesus. We rebuke, bind, and cast out heaviness in all the ways it would manifest itself, in all the ways it would express itself in the name of the Lord. Grief, sorrow, elebandase, suicidal thoughts. We break your power. We release the blood of Jesus Christ against you. And we decree freedom today. Father, release the oil of joy. Yes, break the heavy chains and God pour out your spirit. God, give garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Father, we thank you that even right now you're turning things around. We decree breakthrough. Hallelujah. And even turn around. Father, let the heads be lifted. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Father, we thank you that where there has been pity, there shall be praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, where there has been complaining, God, may there be celebration. Hallelujah. Send a cosa. God, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody ought to shout because God is real. And God is good. Hallelujah. Come on. He's the Lord, our God. We call him Jehovah Elohim. He is the Lord of corporate righteousness. He's not just my God. Uh, he's not just your God, but he is our God. Hallelujah. It is in him that we live. We move and have our very being. Father, we bless you. You are Jehovah M. Kadesh, the one who sanctifies us. Yes, God. You are daily delivering me from the power of sin. I am not obligated to obey the dictates of my sinful nature, of the sin nature, of the flesh, of carnality. Yet I don't have to obey those desires. I don't have to obey those lusts. But through the power of Holy Spirit, I mortify the deeds of the flesh. Come on here, man of God, woman of God, you've got power today. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 says it like this, that you and I can come into a better understanding of the incredible greatness of the power of God, which is at work in us, hallelujah. Even right now, I'm telling you, resurrection power is accessible to you right now. Resurrection power is available to you right now. I'm telling you, if you will tap in, if you will press in the same power, Paul says in Romans 8, that raised Jesus Christ from the grave, from the dead, yes, shall quicken your mortal flesh, shall cause you to come alive, shall invigorate you, shall enliven you, shall cause you to be stirred in the name of Jesus. Be stirred, be renewed, be invigorated. Come alive in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you're causing there to be a stirring in our hearts. God, we thank you that you're causing there to be a stirring in our mind. God, give us the desire to want to do your will. God, compel us by your kindness. Compel us by your grace. God, instruct us in the way everlasting. Lead us, Lord. Inspire us, God, through your word that we will be willing vessels, willing contributors, that we will say, Lord, wherever you lead, I will follow. God, do a work in our hearts this evening. Yes, you are. You are the, the, the master. Hallelujah. Oh, God, come on. Somebody ought to lift their hands and say, Lord, work on me. Uh, somebody ought to lift their hands right now and say, God, I give you permission. Come on, somebody ought to lift their hands and say, Lord, I want you to do what you do. Hallelujah. Work in my heart, God. Hallelujah. God, do surgery. Ah, God, where there's been doubt and, and when there's been unbelief, Lord, I yield myself. God, I, I open myself to you. Hallelujah. Jesus told the religious leaders and the Pharisees that they had no room for his message. They were full of themselves. They were full of lies. They were full of deceptions. Therefore, they could not receive truth. That's why he said, you are like your father, the 
devil. When he speaks, he's speaking native to what he is and what he believes because he is the father of all lies. He can't tell the truth. Neither does he want to. Oh God, we will not be like the Pharisees and scribes. We will not be like those religious leaders or teachers. No, God. We open ourselves this evening. Come on, man of God, woman of God. He wants to do a work in you. Come on, man of God, woman of God. He wants to, he wants to work in. He wants his word to come alive in you. Come on, God desires uh, to, to begin to remove some things that are uh, unfruitful. God desires to, to shape your life. Even right now, Father, we pray that your love will begin to shape our lives. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Father, that you are the husbandman. You are the vine dresser. Yeah. And we pray, Lord, that you would begin to prune. Oh, God, it doesn't feel good all the time, but we know it's for our good. Oh, God, we, we want to be branches that bear fruit. So, Lord, we yield ourselves this evening. We want to be those, God, who are productive for you. We want to be those, God, that are fruitful for you. Lord, you said that we didn't choose you, but, God, you chose us and appointed us that we may go and bear fruit and fruit that would remain. Lord, work in us. Lord, work on us. Oh God, our hearts are desperately wicked. Our hearts are deceitful. God, forgive, and forgive us for listening to our heart and not listening to your voice. God, forgive us for following our heart and not following your heart. God, forgive us. Come on here, people. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God wants to do something in your heart this evening. Listen, when I say this, I say it with all sincerity and all respect. Listen, you see, a lot of things will shift in our lives if God is able to shift something in our heart. But we've got to give him permission. God is, God is not going to deal with the stubborn people. This is why Moses had to intercede for the Israelites because God, uh, God said, hey, Moses, I'm going to start over with you. I'm tired of these stiff neck folks. I'm tired of these stubborn folks. I'm tired of these unbelieving folks, Moses. I'll make a whole new nation out of you. Hallelujah. And Moses began to intercede and say, God, you can't do that, Lord. I, I know that they're, they're acting up, but God, you can't do that. What will the Egyptians say? What will our enemies say about you? You brought them out, but you couldn't even sustain them. God, don't do it. God, relent on your anger. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God can't do anything with a stubborn man. God can't do anything with a resistant woman. But to those who are broken, ha, tashe, in spirit, those who have a contrite heart, great things can happen. This is why David, even though he did some bogus things, this is why David, even though he sinned because he was contrite in heart and because he had a broken spirit, glory to God, he was able to be restored. He was able to come and remain in fellowship. He said, Lord, whatever you do, Hallelujah. Don't take your spirit from me. And he said, Lord, created me a clean heart. I'm telling you, the key is the heart. The heart is the centerpiece. The heart is the place of focus. If you and I will say, Lord, with all that's within us, created me a clean heart. Hallelujah. Come on here. Oh, God, you can do it in me. Yeah. In the Bible, let's just know Acts 13. That he was a man after the heart of God. Yes, he was a man after his heart. Uh, he was a man who, who, who was able and willing to yield himself because of his heart posture. That's what God wants, ma'am. That's what God wants, sir. He wants a man and a woman who will make room for him. And so I'm asking to lift those hands. Hallelujah. Oh, God, do a work inside of us. Father, creating us a clean heart. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, ask him, Father, create in me a clean heart and renew an upright spirit within me. Oh, God, I, I, I won't be presumptuous this evening and I, I, I won't presume cleanness. No, Lord, I, I want to be right, God. I, I, I want to be sure, Father. I don't want to miss anything, Lord. There's some areas that I might not pay attention to that you see. Oh, God, there may be some areas of concealment. There may be some things that I'm trying to cover, but the Bible lets me know that everything is made naked before you. There is nothing in all creation that can be hidden from you, God. So you see, our Lord, every secret fault. Come on here, people of God. Come on. He wants it all. 
Come on, remember that song by Forever Jones? He wants it all today. Hallelujah. He wants it all today, right now. Now is the time. Right now is the moment. Come on, give him your heart this evening. Come on, give him your heart, Father. Oh, I yield to you. Oh, do you yield is the question. Will you yield is the question this evening. Will you yield? Holy Ghost can do a lot with the yielded man. Holy Ghost can do a lot with the yielded woman. Oh, a yielded man and a yielded woman will keep covenant. Hallelujah. You see, God moves on from unyielded people. Come on here, preacher. God moves on from folks who are stubborn and resistant. Yeah. Just ask, just ask Joshua and Caleb what happened to their buddies. Just ask Joshua and Caleb what happened to their compadres. Just ask Joshua and Caleb what happened to their comrades, to their fellow spies. Just ask Joshua and Caleb what happened to the other men who went into the promised land to scout out the land. Some came back with an evil report. Some came back majoring on the minors and minoring on the majors. Some came back unbelieving and doubting, and they spread an evil report amongst the people, and they did not enter in. I don't know about you, man of God. I don't know about you, woman of God, but I didn't come this far to not enter into the promises. I didn't come all this way. I did not resist. I did not resist. I didn't go through all these deliverances and I didn't do all this fasting and I didn't do all this praying. And I've not been all attentive and responsive just to get to this place and not be able to inherit the promise. Oh, God, do a work in my heart. Come on. Come on. Do you recognize you can be so close and still miss it? You can be so close and still miss it. Look at Moses. God said you can see it, but you can't touch it. You can see it, but you can't go in. Father, I don't want to be so close, but unable to access. Oh, Lord, you called us to inherit the land. The righteous shall inherit the land. Father, thank you for bringing us not just to the land, but bringing us into the land. Father, do a work. Come on, don't fool yourself, ma'am. Come on, don't fool yourself, sir. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So what you went to church last week? So what you prayed this morning? So what you prayed yesterday? Come on and give him all of you. A lot can happen between morning time and right now. A lot has happened between morning time and right now. A lot has happened between last Sunday and right now. Come on, give him your heart. Oh, I feel compelled to lead us in this way. Give him your heart. A lot can happen with a man, a woman that's yielded. Hallelujah. Oh, look at what Joshua did. Look at what Joshua did. He was yielded to God. The Lord raised him up and he succeeded Moses. Uh, the Bible says, and I'm going here. The Bible says that Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua was full of wisdom. God can do a lot through a yielded man and a yielded woman. Hallelujah. He can do a lot. He can do a lot through a yielded man and a yielded woman. Come on, look at what happened when Peter was converted. Jesus said, Peter, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as we. But I have prayed for you. Glory to his name. And he says, after you have been strengthened, after you have been converted, then go strengthen your brothers. God, or the Lord already, already was uh, looking forward to his comeback. Oh, that's good right there. God was already looking forward to his overcoming the obstacle and the challenge. I'm telling you, once once, once the Lord had his heart, he was able to do a lot through Peter. He became the leader of the church at Jerusalem. He, he became one of the lead apostles of the church. He, he was one whose shadow was an instrument of healing. God can do a lot with a man or woman who was yielded. Come on and yield this evening. Come on and come on. That's what we need to pray for. When we pray for our loved ones, we need to pray. We need to pray that God would do a, we need to pray that the that Holy Spirit will hover over their hearts and would do a work in their hearts and would draw them and create and, and give them clean hearts, hearts that are yielded to God, hearts that will say yes to God, hearts that will submit to God. That's that's what it is. It is rebellion. 
It is rebellion. Rebellion causes you to become hard hearted. Hallelujah. That's why people need to know that God loves them. That's why people need to know that God accepts them. That's why people need to know the scripture that says whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why? Because many people today are suffering from the spirit of rejection and they believe that because of their wickedness or their sinfulness or their ignorance that God rejects them. But it's the complete opposite. In fact, God loves them so much that he already planned before time to adopt us and bring us into relationship with him, bring us into his family through Jesus Christ, my Lord. No, so we break that power. We break rejection in Jesus' name. The lies of rejection, may they be silenced in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we lose the spirit of adoption. We've been engrafted in. The Lord has adopted us. Ephesians 1 says he's brought us into the family. Those of us who were not his people have become his people through the shared blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for making this all possible. Glory to his name. Mandala shade. First Corinthians 1 says that God has caused Christ to be the wisdom, that Christ is the wisdom of God. Come on, God chose to, to send the Savior in the babe's body. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he dwelt amongst men. He, he was raised as, as, a, as a man. He understands the human developmental process. And he, he understands humanity at all of its stages. Isn't that beautiful? He, he understands humanity from, from, from the little ones all the way to the mature ones, to the adults. And he is a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. I'm telling you, you ought to give God praise for Jesus. Uh, you better lift him up. You ought to reverence him. You ought to honor him. You ought to rejoice in the Lord your God because he is the wisdom of God manifest for us. In him lie all the treasures of wisdom and, and knowledge and understanding. In him we live. We move and have our very being. He is life, the author of life. And we bless him. It is wise to yield to Christ. It is wisdom to have a heart that is open to him. It is wisdom to have a heart that is yielded to him. And I'm telling you, God can do a whole lot through a people who have yielded hearts. Now, I want to show I just feel an anointing right here. Come on. Can you pray with me real for a few moments? Just pray. Let's press in right here. If you have your prayer language, I want you to use it right now. Come on, there's something supernatural that happens when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, you see, it's not the kingdom if there's no supernatural associated with it. Uh, if there's no manifestation of the king and the king is spirit, the king is supernatural. If there's no manifestation of the, the king in the midst, and it can't possibly be a representation of accurately of his kingdom. Come on and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost if you have your prayer language. Ramanda sota la la ba di olo no boko rase te me de olo no bodo se Holy Ghost hover over us ta mande be de olo no bo shata ele bande se ke de le banda braka ta mande be de olo no ba di ase te ele bande le bodo ko na la la ba di olo no ba da braka ta ele mande de be ko da ba se te ba kuraso ta ba di a ta ba do lo no bodo ko la la ba kata ele le mande a sa ta braka ta ba da la la ba di osata. Kona bada sete bede kona nada badi yolo bo kobra kata ele bando la mandi bodo lo bo kobra kata ele bede koto bra kata ba sate beshe. Come on for a few more moments. I want you to tarry with me. Come on here. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Sete mandi yolo lo bo dobra kata ye de mande bro kona la la mande sete bede kete ele banda bra sonda la la bada kata ba se ye sete mandi yolo lo bo dobra kata mande bede be shota. Ilarando san de brekona mande kata ele bande bede kona la la bada brakata mande bede kona makata brakata 
Ile banda brakata manda sota bakata. Esheke de le manda brakata mande bede kona mandi ata. Ile bande bede kona la bakota brasete. Ile bandi ololo bodo brakata makola la la badi asete. Ile mande de de mandi asete le bodo koshata. Holy Ghost, work in us. Ite mande breko na la la mande sete. Ile banda sondo brase. We lift our voices, Holy Spirit, and we ask you to work in us. Oh, God, work in us. Work, Lord, in our hearts. Father, let us be a people of conviction. Uh, let, let us be a people who are unwavering in the faith. Let us be a people who are uncompromising. Let us be a people who are consecrated unto you. Uh, let us be a people who can comfort those who are in mourning, oh God. Let us be a people, oh God, who have experienced your comfort, therefore are able to administer your comfort, Lord, to the broken, the needy, the downtrodden, and the oppressed. Father, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo, I feel good right there. Now, listen, I want to I want to pray some specific prayers. Uh, it's been in my heart this throughout this day uh, to begin to lift up the importance of wisdom. I really believe that God wants us to understand uh, the importance of wisdom in this day. Now, it would require a whole series of teaching on this, uh, but I'm going to touch it briefly in a few moments. But even as we were praying in the Holy Ghost, I, I must share this. And somebody please put this in the comment box. I want to give you Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Hallelujah. Verse 27. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. In the New Living Translation, it simply says this. What is impossible for people, hallelujah, is possible with God. What is impossible... For people. Now notice the prepositions that are used here. I'm going, I'm going to English class on you. Notice the prepositions that are used here. What is impossible for people? Talking about their capacity to do. For. What is impossible for people is possible with. That's another preposition. Possible with God. That's the key, man of God. That's the key. A uh, uh, woman of God, Hallelujah! It is, it is possible with Him. In other words, what man cannot do, God can do. You got that right. But now let's go a bit further. What's impossible for people to bring about, achieve, accomplish, is possible with God. One, God can do it. But also, here's the key. Here's the key phrase: is possible. Watch this. With God. Come on here. In other words, God is not calling you to a work for him where you do it without him. So it's not just that he is able to do it himself, but God is able to do it. He, he God wants you to understand that you can do it with him. Come on. The Bible says in first Corinthians three that we are co-laborers with God. Uh, uh, can I give it to you like this? Acts 10 38 says it like this. It says God was with Come on here. God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. And watch this. And God was with him. So that means that there was nothing supernatural. There was nothing noteworthy that Jesus did where father was not with him. Come on here. That is so good to me. God was with him the whole time. Sometimes we get it twisted, but the scripture says in Colossians that it, it, that that the entire the the entirety of the Godhead dwelt in Christ. In other words, there was never a separation there. Jesus Christ represented the Godhead in fullness. He was represented re representing Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all at the same time. There was always synergy. There was always holy. There was always divine community right there. Everywhere Jesus went, it was with God that he cast out demons. It was with God that he healed the sick. It was with God 
that he performed miracles. It was with God that he brought forth great authoritative teaching to the degree that they said, what, wh where did he come from? We never heard teaching like this in all of Israel. It was because God was with him. And I want to encourage you, man of God, woman of God, some of you have been frustrated because you've been thinking that it's just about it's just about you praying and then you doing it. No, what's impossible for people is possible with God. He never meant to release you to do it by yourself. Hallelujah. That which is spirit is spirit. That means that it has to be carried out by the spirit with the spirit. God is spirit. John 4, 24. So what you going to do if you want to do something spiritual for the kingdom, it has to be done with God, with him, with him, with him. Hallelujah. He's good today. He's good to me. Glory to your name, Lord. Come on, write that down. Meditate on that. See how it applies to your life. Have you been trying to do something alone? Have you really been allowing God to do? Have you really been allowing God room in that matter or that situation? Come on. It says it's possible with him. Come on here. That's a reason to celebrate right there. But listen, I, I want to talk to you real quick about the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. Listen, uh, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 19, verse eight. Proverbs 19, verse eight. Please, somebody put it in the comment box. Proverbs 19, verse eight says this New Living Translation. To acquire wisdom is to love oneself. Woo! To acquire wisdom is to love oneself. Come on here. A man, oh my God, a manifestation or proof, evidence that you actually love yourself is if you pursue wisdom. If you pursue wisdom and obtain it and retain it. Then it says, people who cherish understanding will prosper. In other words, you will preserve yourself if you get wisdom. You will be doing yourself a favor if you appreciate and you go after wisdom. Hallelujah. If you and I get understanding, then that means that we will flourish in life. If you and I get understanding, then that means that you and I will be able to prosper in life. And so what I want to encourage you all to do this evening is to never minimize the importance of wisdom and understanding. Watch this. You can't even operate in the gifts uh, uh, fully if you don't have wisdom and understanding because the gifts are administered by grace, by the spirit. God determines the, dis the, the, the distribution. God determines uh, how it's going to be uh, 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 released unto people who are in need. You need the wisdom of God. You need you you need the wisdom of God to operate in the gifts. You can't even do the things you want to do, really, without the wisdom of God, without understanding. You need to have understanding of what you're doing. And I'm telling you for what God has has in store for many of us, for the body of Christ and specifically for Park Lawn. We have got to get wisdom and get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Hallelujah. So get wisdom and in all thy getting, get understanding. May the Lord give you understanding today. May the Lord give you wisdom today. Hallelujah. I decree now that even wisdom shall refresh your soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> understanding shall refresh your soul. Sometimes we go after those things that are more dynamic or that appear to be more dynamic. Sometimes in the faith, we go after those things that cause splashes and we go after those things that get a lot of a lot of likes and hearts on Instagram, a lot of following. We go after those things that will get us a certain level of attention. Usually the, the things that are associated with power or might garner a lot of attention. So the miracles and so the healings and uh, deliverances and things of that nature. But can I tell you this, that you can't separate wisdom and understanding from the things of God. Come on, wisdom belongs to God. The scripture says that. The Bible says that it comes from him. In fact, Proverbs 1, 7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on here. Do we know our Bibles today? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. So you can't even, you can't even do this life right, live this life right without wisdom and understanding.
The Lord wants you to operate in wisdom and understanding. I'm telling you, God is saying something to us and he's been speaking to Parklawn and he's been dealing with our mind. He said, enlarge the territory of your mind. Prophetically, that's what he said to us. Enlarge your territory. And he said, I'm talking about your mind. He says, God says this about us. He says, we have to change the way we see ourselves. We have to change the way we think about ourselves. We have to change the way that we even think about church. We have to change the way we think about Parklawn. Come on here. If you are a member of another particular faith community, God bless you. But guess what? God wants you to elevate. God wants you to upgrade. God wants you to see your pastor differently. God wants you to see your church family differently. God wants you to see your assignment in that particular household of faith differently. Why? Because where we are is not cutting the mustard. What we've been doing so far is not cutting the mustard. What we've been doing right now is not sufficient. In other words, there is more that God wants to do in you. There is more that God wants to release through you, but you have to have, watch this, a repentant heart. <laughs> Not talking about, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm talking about you have to have a shift of your mind. You have to think differently. Come on here. What did God say to the prophet Isaiah? He said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Come on here. So if we want to really flourish in the things of God, then there has to be an elevation in the way that we think. We have to begin to lean in to the cerebral nature of the Lord God Almighty. So, Father, we're asking you, yes, sir, to help us in the area of wisdom and understanding. Come on here. The wisdom and understanding will help you to know how to how to deal with your unsaved loved ones, how to deal with co-workers, how to deal with neighbors. Come on. You can do a lot with wisdom. Ask Solomon. You can do a lot with wisdom. Come on. You can do a lot with wisdom. Look at the life of Jesus. Jesus was very wise in his dealings with people. He understood what to say and what and how to say it. He understood how to move. He knew when to get little, as they say. He knew when to move around. He knew when to he knew when to avoid the crowds. He operated with supreme wisdom. And I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you this evening. I'm praying that God would give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. That's Ephesians 1 17. I'm in the book. I'm praying that God would give you uh, wisdom and spiritual wisdom and understanding. Ephesians 1 17. Hallelujah. Colossians 1 9. I'm praying this for you. I'm praying this for us. I need God's wisdom as well. I need his understanding as well. His wisdom. Because there is an earthly wisdom. There is a demonic wisdom. But we need the wisdom from heaven. And we need to confess that we have the wisdom from heaven as we walk it out, as we walk out uh, the days of our lives here on earth. Now lift your hands, man of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Lift your hands, woman of God. Glory to his name. I'm going to pray some specific prayers over you. Come on, some of us are stressed out because we don't know what to do. Many of us are frustrated or we get frustrated. We get angry because we don't know what to do. Hallelujah. But the Lord gives wisdom. Proverbs 2, 6 says that the Lord grants wisdom. He gives wisdom. Hallelujah. From his mouth, he, he gives knowledge and understanding. God wants to give these things to us. And so I'm going to pray for you. Come on, lift those hands just to signify that I receive it. Lord, I receive prayer this evening. I receive your word this evening. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you are a generous God. I thank you. We thank you that you give liberally. Hallelujah. You said if we lack wisdom, we can ask you. Yes. And you don't withhold. Uh, you, 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 you don't withhold it from us, but you give it willingly, generously. Father, we pray for a release of wisdom. Father, give us your ideas. God, give us wisdom. Let wisdom begin to unfold and grow in our hearts, oh God. Father, may your words, God of wisdom and understanding, be released unto us. Hallelujah. Father, make known to us, Lord, the way that we should take. Make known unto us, Lord, the mystery of your will. Father, where there's darkness, Lord, light it up. Make darkness light before us, we pray, according to Isaiah 42 and 16, Father. Help us, Lord, to understand, yes, God, the deep things. 
Help us, God, to understand your deep thoughts. Psalm 92, 5 says, how deep are your thoughts? Oh, God, let our eyes be enlightened by your word, Lord. God, give us treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Isaiah 45 and verse 3. Lord, hide not your wisdom from us. Hide not understanding from us, we pray, O oh Lord. But let it be revealed to us that we may walk rightly, that we may follow you accurately in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that in this day and time, we have eyes that see and we have ears that hear. Thank you, Lord, that you even give us capacity to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth and height of your love. Father, help us to be a people who walk in wisdom all of our days. And Lord, we ask you to keep us from wild activity. Keep us, Lord, from being wild and, and being unsubmitted, God. Forgive us, Lord, for wild tendencies and wild conduct, oh God, and wild conversation, oh God. Conversation that's all over the place. Conversation, Lord, that's uh, uh, not sanctioned by heaven. Conversation, Lord, that does not reflect what you have said about us. Uh, Father, your word says in, Revel in Proverbs rather 29, 18, that where there is no revelation, the people act wild. Where there's no revelation, hallelujah, where there's no word from the Lord, the people cast off restraint. The people act wastefully. Father, we're praying that you would reveal wisdom to us, that you would give us understanding, Lord, so that we don't act out of order. So that, God, we align our lives uh, completely with your will. Father, let us be as even the people of Judah in the time of Hezekiah. Let us be as those who said we will renew covenant with God. We will submit to the demands of God. We will submit to the commands, the statutes, the regulations, and the laws of Father God. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance for your wisdom. Come on now, if you have a specific area of your life in which you need wisdom, it could be concerning a family matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. It could be concerning a, a, a home business affair. It could be. It could be concerning a career. <clears throat> Excuse me. It could be concerning a number of things. Come on, you need to begin to speak over this. Speak this over your life. I have wisdom. I, I, I pursue wisdom. Come on, make these confessions. I obtain, I acquire wisdom and I'm blessed. I acquire wisdom and understanding and I prosper. I'm successful. I have great gain. I prosper. Through wisdom, I prosper. Through understanding, I prosper. Yes, through understanding. I succeed. Through understanding, I excel. Through your wisdom, I grow. Through your wisdom, Father, I'm protected. Through your wisdom, I have favor. Through your wisdom, I can see. I know how to respond. I'm telling you, this is, this is so pivotal for us. We need the wisdom of God. We need understanding from on high. We need wisdom from God. We need understanding from on high. There's so many decisions that you and I are going to have to make. There's so many uh, programs that are being promoted in front of our eyes. There's so many different approaches and ways to do things that we get bombarded with, and we need the wisdom of God. We need to know what things will, uh, will, will, will be in alignment with his heart and with his, even with his plans for us. We need the wisdom of God. Help us, Father, to recognize wisdom uh, when it's in front of us. Yes. Let us not cast off, block, deny, or ignore those who are messengers of wisdom, those who are messengers who come forth with understanding. Father, forgive us if we've ignored, denied, blocked, or refused those that you've sent in our lives in times past. Forgive us for not recognizing your voice in theirs. Forgive us, Father, for diminishing the, 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 the relevance of what uh, these persons have had to say to us. But Lord, we recognize that you, you, you don't always package your goods in the, in, in the, in, in the uh, images or in the representations that are culturally or socially acceptable. You take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and you, you take the weak things of this world to confound the strong. Father, help us to have discerning ears. 
Help us to have discerning eyes, Lord, to recognize those whom you send to our lives who have wisdom and understanding. God, make me a man of understanding. If you're a woman, say, Lord, make me a woman of understanding. Make me a woman of wisdom. Hallelujah. Oh, God, even when hands are laid upon me by those who have wisdom, let me receive an impartation of wisdom. Let me receive downloads and divine release of wisdom and understanding. Father, we thank you that you give us wisdom to conquer. Thank you for wisdom to strategize. Thank you for wisdom to deploy. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the wisdom to know how to war effectively, how to work effectively. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom to govern. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom to steward. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom, hallelujah, to execute and to bring to pass the things that you've called us to do. Father, finally, I pray Psalm 57, verse 2, for all those who are with me right now, all 70 plus, I pray, God, that you would bring to pass, that you would bring to completion everything that you've said about us, that you would bring to pass those plans that you have for our lives. Father, I pray, Isaiah 46, verse 10, I pray, Lord, that all that you have planned, hallelujah, yeah, that, that you would cause everything that you've planned and decided about us to come to pass, because the word says there that you do whatever you wish. Father, may it happen exactly as you have planned it. May your vision for our lives. May your dream for our lives come to fruition entirely. Nothing missing, nothing lacking in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I bless you, Father, for this time that we've had together. I honor you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I bless those who've been faithful. I thank you, God, that, hallelujah. I thank you, God, uh, for for the 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 effect effectiveness uh, of fervent prayers, thank you that they prevail. And Father, we ask you, Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the people of God. Lord, bless them, Lord, with rest tonight. Bless them, Lord, with peace. Lord, may shalom be their portion. Father, may Shalom be up in there. Uh, 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 may Shalom be in their, their dwelling place, God. May prosperity even be in their, their home as well. May they have rest, health, and healing. May they prosper in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that favor, that grace, that mercy would be multiplied in their lives. That, Lord, you would lift up your countenance upon them, Father. Hallelujah. And give them, grant them peace. Thank you, Father, for revelation and even understanding of the power that is accessible, the power that worketh on the inside of us. And Lord, we echo Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding, hallelujah, abundantly, above all, hallelujah, ikataba that we can ask or think, <clears throat> we can imagine, according to that power that worketh in us. Thank you, Lord, for that power that worketh in us. Thank you, God, for resurrection power that worketh in us. Mm. Thank you for resurrection power that is alive in us. Hallelujah. Come on here. Oh, man of God, work that. Work that power. Woman of God, work that power. Let it work in you and let it work through you. Father, I thank you for testimonies. I thank you in advance for testimonies from those who begin to allow this power to work through them, who allow this power to manifest. Thank you for testimonies of healings. Thank you for testimonies of salvations. Thank you for testimonies, oh God, of breakthrough and deliverances. Thank you, Lord that this power is effectual. 
that this power is unstoppable, unbeatable. Your power, resurrection power, divine power working in us and through us. We cancel every assignment of the enemy against our lives. Yes, God. We break the power of the enemy to riddle us with fear. We cast it off and we cast it out in Jesus name. And we decree that we will go forth in perfect love for your word says that perfect love cast out fear. We receive your love. We receive your adoption. We believe God that you love us for us. We believe God that you are for us and not against us. We believe God that you desire Lord to see us succeed. And so, Lord, we receive your plans. We receive your plans this evening. We receive your plans, God. We receive your promises. May it all come to pass. May it all be fulfilled. And, Father, we thank you that it's not by our might, nor is it by our power, but, Lord, it is by your spirit, hallelujah, that it is done. We say thank you, Lord. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Paul. Yes, he will fulfill his purpose for me. That's a that's a great confession to make. That's a great de that's a great declaration to make. God will fulfill his purpose for me. Psalm 57 two, New Living Translation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, people of God. Shout out to the Park Law family. Also, shout out to all those who are guests and who just chose to join us on today. We love you. Thank you for your presence and your participation. Uh, we look forward to doing it again. Um, come back next Wednesday at, at 6 p.m. Uh, for prayer. If you don't have a church home and you're watching, listen, you can join us online, uh, Facebook Live at 10 a.m. for our Sunday worship service. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, there are those who will, will choose to worship in person. If you haven't already reserved your seat through Eventbrite, make sure you do that. The seats do go fast. Uh, we had a wonderful time uh, last Sunday, and uh, we look forward to God doing great things this Sunday as well. Have a great night. Uh, make sure you take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. God bless you.